Map images are made up of pixels, vector images are made up of paths. By definition, a vector is a path between two points on the screen. In Fireworks, you can create vector shapes and paths by using the tools in the Tools panel, as well as Auto Shapes located in the Shapes panel. In this lesson, we'll learn how to draw a basic vector shape, create compound vector shapes, use the Knife tool, work with colors, use the Pen tool, and use the additional vector tools in Fireworks. Take a look at the Vector section of the Tools panel. This section of the Tools panel contains the tools you'll need to draw basic vector shapes. The Line tool, Pen tool, Rectangle tool, Text tool, Knife tool, and Freeform tool. To create a shape, such as the rectangle, click on the Rectangle tool. Then click and drag on your document. You can see the points on each corner of our rectangle. You can also see the paths, or lines, that connect the points to make up the shape. Now let's go back to the Tools panel. Click and hold on the Rectangle tool to see the other tools grouped with it. All these shapes are vector shapes that you can draw. Let's create a donut shape by selecting the Donut tool. Click and drag to add the shape to your canvas. Take the time to practice drawing the different types of vector shapes grouped with the Rectangle tool. Learning what each shape looks like, as well as how to add it to your canvas, will help you after you finish this course and start to use fireworks on your own. A compound shape is a shape that's made up of two or more simple shapes, such as rectangles. To create a compound shape in Firework, start out by drawing one shape. Next, go to the Properties panel and select a compound path mode. From left to right, the modes are Normal, Add Union, Subtract Punch, Intersect, and Crop. Let's explore each one of the modes to see how they work. Let's use the rectangle we drew on our canvas. Now we're going to click on Add Union. Now draw a few more shapes. Then click the pointer tool in the Tools panel. Click outside of the canvas to deselect the shapes. The shapes have now been joined. To show you how Subtract Punch works, we've drawn an ellipse shape on our canvas. Now click on the Subtract Punch mode in the Properties panel. Draw another shape that partially overlaps with the ellipse. As you can see, the second shape subtracts from the first shape or punches out the part of the second shape that overlaps the first. When you use the intersect mode to create a compound shape, you create a new shape out of the intersecting areas of other shapes. Let me show you what I mean. We're going to draw a rectangle and then click on the intersect button. Now we're going to draw another rectangle that slightly overlaps the first one. As you can see, the compound shape was created by the intersecting areas of the two rectangles. To create a compound shape using the crop mode, let's start out by drawing an ellipse. Click on the crop button in the properties panel. Now draw another shape. Crop mode crops away all areas of the shape that aren't overlapped by the new shape. The knife tool allows you to split a vector shape that you've drawn in half. Here we've drawn an ellipse. To cut this shape in half, click on the knife tool in the vector area of the tools panel. Drag the knife from one side of the shape to the other. When you release your mouse, you'll see two points added. The first point is where you started cutting with the knife. The second point is where you stopped. Keep in mind these points will always be on a path. Click on the first point with the knife tool to close off the path. You can see how the knife is now cutting the shape in half. You can then click and drag on either half of the shape to reposition it. Whenever you create vector shapes in Fireworks, there's little doubt that you'll also want to add color to those shapes. In this part of the lesson, we're going to show you exactly how to do that using several different tools available to you in Fireworks. Every vector shape has a stroke color and a fill color. You can add and change the stroke and fill color for any vector shape using the tools in the colors area of the tools panel. What's more, you can create custom colors as well. The stroke color is the color of the border around the shape. However, don't confuse the border of the shape with the path of the shape. The path of the shape is always in blue and appears when you're working with the vector tools. The fill color is the color that appears inside of the shape. You can see a black stroke color around our shape, but a green fill color inside. To change the stroke color, go to the Colors area of the Tools panel. Click the swatch that appears next to the pencil. You'll then see the Color Picker. You can click on one of the color tiles to select that color. In addition, you can enter a hex number or enter RGB values. You can also click the white square with a red dash through it if you don't want a stroke color at all. Click the color wheel to access the color dialog box where you can create a custom color. To add a fill, click on the swatch to the right of the paint bucket. 
Follow the same steps you took to create a stroke color to create a fill color for your shape. You can further edit fill and stroke colors, including specifying the thickness of the stroke, by using the Properties panel. The eyedropper tool allows you to copy a color from an image, shape, or an object, then apply that color to a shape. Take a look at our canvas. We want to use the teal and the square on the left as the fill color for the square on the right. To do this, we're going to select the shape for which we want to add the color. Next, we're going to click on the eyedropper tool. Since we want to use the teal color as our fill color, we're also going to click on the fill color in the tools panel, as we did in the last section. However, we don't need to select a color. Instead, we just need to click on it to tell Fireworks that we want to add a fill color. Once we've done that, we're ready to use the eyedropper tool. Move your mouse to the area that contains the color that you want to copy. You'll see a little eyedropper appear as your mouse pointer. Click on the color that you want to copy. The color is instantly applied to our shape. The Paint Bucket tool is an easy way to change the color of a selected shape. Right now the fill color for this shape is brown. Notice that the shape is not selected. We don't need it to be. Let's change the fill color of the shape to yellow. To do so, we're going to click on the Paint Bucket tool. Next, we're going to click on the swatch for fill color and change it to yellow. Now move your mouse over the shape on the canvas. You'll see the mouse cursor turn to a paint bucket and the shape will become active. Simply click to apply the new fill color. The gradient tool is grouped with the paint bucket tool. Once you've clicked on the gradient tool, click on the fill color swatch to bring up the gradient menu. In the gradient drop-down menu, choose the type of gradient that you want to apply. Click on the stoppers that appear below the color bar to choose the colors for your gradient. Click on the ones above the color bar to set the opacity. You can move all of the stoppers to further customize the look of your gradient. Take time to experiment so you produce a look that you like. You use the pen tool to create a path. The path is made up of curved and straight segments. These segments are created by anchor points. When you click the pen tool in the vector area of the tools panel, you can draw corner points and straight segments. If you drag the pen tool, you can create smooth points and curved segments. These segments will have direction handles so you can change the direction of the segments. You can also use smart guides to help you align segments. Let's use the pen tool to create a rectangle. First click on the pen tool and then click on the canvas to create an anchor point. This appears as a blue dot. Now click to create a second anchor point in a different location. As you can see, a line segment appears between the two anchor points that you just created. Continue to add anchor points to create your shape. To create a closed path, connect your last anchor point with the first anchor point. A straight line is an open path. A circle is a closed path, so is a polygon and rectangle. Now let's learn to draw a curve with the pen tool. To do this, you're going to click to place the first anchor point just as before, but now you're going to click and drag. Now release your mouse and move to where you want the second point to be. Click and drag again. As you can see, your curved line appears between the two points. The shape of your curve is defined by the length and direction of the handles. You can add more anchor points and handles. Remember, just as with lines, segments are drawn from the previous to the new anchor point. To create a closed path, connect the last point with the first. In Fireworks, you can add, subtract, or delete anchor points to modify a path. Here's how to add anchor points. Select the object for which you want to add an anchor point. Make sure the pen tool is selected. Hover your mouse over the path where you want to add the anchor point. You'll see a small plus sign appear beside the pen tool cursor. Click your mouse to add the new anchor point. You can now click and drag on the anchor point to modify the segment. Click on an anchor point to delete it. You can use the Subselection tool to edit paths by clicking and dragging on an anchor point. In Fireworks, any text that you add will appear inside a text box. The text box is actually a vector shape. To add text to a document, click on the Text tool in the Vector area of the Tools panel. Go to your Fireworks document. Click on the location where you want the text to begin and start typing. As you type, you'll see the text box form around the text that you enter. To format the text, click the text box until you see the blinking cursor, then select the text that you want to format. Go to the Properties panel to format the text using standard word processing tools. To wrap text around an object, select the object, then draw a path outlining the object shape using the pen tool. 
Next, use the Text tool to add your text. Put the text in the same layer as the shape. If you want, you can temporarily hide the shape while you add your text. Next, with both the text and the shape path visible, select the pointer tool and drag around the shape and the text to select both. Go to Text Attach in Path. Once you understand what a vector shape is and how to create them, using the rest of the tools available in the vector area of the Tools panel just takes a little practice. Once you master drawing basics and compound shapes, as well as using the pen tool, take the time to practice using these tools as well. The vector path tool is grouped with the pen tool. This tool is like the pen tool, but it offers more precise control for those using a stylus or drawing tablet. The redraw path tool is also grouped with the pen tool. It's used to edit an active path by connecting a segment drawn with this tool to the active path. The path you draw with this tool must start out intersecting with the active path or shape. The freeform tool lets you alter the shape of vectors using your mouse instead of editing anchor points. You can simply use the mouse to push or pull on a path. Fireworks will add or remove points as needed. You don't have to worry about it. The reshape area tool is grouped with the freeform tool. It's like a smudge tool for vector shapes. However, instead of smearing pixels, it edits a path shape by pulling out on the path. The path scrubber tools are also grouped with the freeform tool. It increases or decreases the heaviness of the stroke that's applied to the path. In order to use these tools, you must paint over the parts of the path that you want to scrub.